One, two, three, four, get my shoes and out the door. Five, I'm alive, six, seven, eight, feeling great. Nine, I'm gonna shine, life is good. I'm doing five, ten, gonna do it right and do it again, yeah. I look into the sky with all the beautiful color, but there's more than just for me, so gonna share it with another. I got to show, to give, let out, I want to sing and shout. Take a look and see a beautiful morning that turns into a beautiful evening. And together make a beautiful life. And if you wanna see, then come along with me. Hello and welcome to Experience Michiana. I can't wait for next week's show when you get to see me do jazzercise. <laughs> Remember this, Spirit Fingers? What movie was that? You have a lot of energy. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you need when you come to jazzercise. But that's on next week's show. It we is. can't wait to show you yeah. guys. You're going to have so I can't much wait. fun. You're going to want to do this too? I can't Probably wait. in your living room. But well, we have a great show for them this week. Yes, we do. We have an electric, electric vehicle yeah, exhibition that's on mm -hmm. at the Innovation Park. Uh, there's also a nighttime bike ride down in Winona Lake. Okay, and then we're headed to the Hummingbird Lounge. Mm -hmm. And all I want to tell you is you're going to get your drink on. Yes, you are. <laughs> I need it after cancer size. <laughs> Today we're at the Hummingbird Lounge in New Buffalo where I'm about to meet Courtney. And we are so excited because we know this is going to be a very unique experience because hummingbirds are unique. They're the smallest bird in the world. Their wings don't flap, they rotate, and they drink about five to eight times an hour, which is exactly what we're about to do because we heard the drinks up in this place are sweet. <laughs> Courtney, I'm so glad you could make it. I know, I'm excited for this experience. I know, Ben, we are excited. And I must say, this place looks very classy. It <laughs> is very, very classy. Good. And this is like a, a proper cocktail bar. Mm. What does that mean? Great question, thank you for asking. So what that means is we care about everything that goes into the cocktail experience. So to give you some examples, we spent a lot of money on really nice glassware. That mm. improves the drinking experience. We have a $15,000 ice machine that makes perfect one by one square cubes. Oh, so that, that the, top, <laughs> the top of your drink will taste the same as the bottom of your drink. Uh -huh. We cut all of our garnishes to order. We use premium spirits. We make everything that we use in our glass, in our cocktails, we juice uh, in house. Wow. So fresh juices, premium spirits, quality glassware, the best ice we can get. That's what a proper cocktail bar is to us. And then, of course, smiley, friendly people to guide, <laughs> you, on your, right here. <laughs> guide, you, guide you on your cocktail adventure. And the cocktails is really what inspired you to open the Hummingbird Lounge because there really is no other place like it in this area. That's true. There are a couple of places that have great cocktails for mm -hmm. sure, but not one that's really focused primarily on providing a cocktail experience first. And we do have a couple of local brews. We have some wines as well, because not everybody enjoys a cocktail. We also have a pretty good selection of spirit-free cocktails. But the okay. cocktails are where it all starts here at the Hummingbird Lounge. And now you guys have been open since April, so just a few months now. What has been the most popular uh, cocktail that people have come in for? So that's the one that I want to make for you first. Oh, it's called okay. our Smoked Pineapple Margarita. Oh. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what we do is we take fresh pineapples, cut them into strips, we dust them with a little little chili diarble, gives them this beautiful yeah. color, kind okay. of savory, a little bit of heat, not much, and then we put them in a smoker for about a half uh, about a half hour. We let them cool, we juice it, and then we use that as the orange liqueur element in a traditional margarita. So fresh lime juice, fresh lemon juice, a little, uh, a little bit of agave, this smoked pineapple juice, and premium Anejo tequila, and, and that's, uh, that's the smoked pineapple margarita. Wow. It's been our most popular drink by far. Well, I, I do feel like I should get an extra cocktail because you opened up on my birthday. That's true, <laughs> and we're gonna celebrate it here today. <laughs> So right now we're at the bar, yep. but you have a lot of different spaces and they all have their own unique flavor to it. Absolutely. Yeah, so we have a beautiful old Victorian house as sort of the backdrop for the Hummingbird Lounge. And certainly that advised some of the design and the interior uh, decor elements to the mm -hmm. space. But it is kind of chopped up into little nooks and crannies around the space. So we, we've added some banquettes along the windows here to create a more cozy, maybe a date night environment. We added this bar. This did not exist before we purchased um, the property. Can't have a bar without a bar. Uh, in the other room, we have a little fireplace lounge. We have a small private event space upstairs for eight to 10 guests. 
And then we have a large garden area and a deck and lots of outdoor spaces uh, as well. The idea being that depending on how your day is going, you may want a quieter, mm. more secluded cocktail okay. experience, or you may just want to have a great cocktail out on a patio. I've heard there's a lake near here, so it seems yeah, like yeah, a, just a little one. Seems, <laughs> like a, seems like a great space for outdoor cocktailing. Now, why the hummingbird? What, what's the name mean? Well, so uh, as, as luck would have it, when we were speaking to our real estate agent, we were in the backyard of our business partner, Mike and Sarah's, and a tiny hummingbird visited us. Oh. Now, my business partner, Mike, has somewhat of a short attention span. So <laughs> he started calling attention to the hummingbird. He starts Googling things about hummingbirds. And the first thing out of his mouth is, hey, do you know that they drink all day? I know. <laughs> Of course they drink all day. They're a tiny little bird and their wings are going crazy. So we started sending each other's messages back and forth. I found a couple of articles from the Audubon Society. He found a couple of articles and we started to have this sort of internal joke about hummingbirds. And as we started to do our research, we realized how very popular this little creature is. Um, and they make a, a pretty amazing journey. So we've said, okay, well, the merchandise and the in the design will look great. We've we've got our mascot. We've got the hummingbird, you know. But in all actuality, our customers are the hummingbird, right? We built mm. a place where they're going to mm -hmm. feel comfortable. Yes. And if they want to start drinking earlier in the day, they could do that. It's early in the day. Let's do this. That's what I'm trying to find out. We combine do make your drink or cups. You see me do some. Every single cup I have here. It does. It does. So food menu tends so. Okay. Uh, is Trace Agaves, uh, we're doing, um, we're doing, and then we use a little bit of vegan egg white substitute that drinks foam up a little bit, you'll see that when I do. Mm -hmm. It's like a shake. master shaker. <laughs> and then each cocktail has a story, right? This tells, uh, this cocktail, and we do that just so that we don't get any little ice shards in you. Awesome. All right, thank you. Mmm. And it's that smoky taste makes it, it really it just makes it really just I need to try a little bit more. You know, it's right. sure. Give it a little something unique, right? Mm -hmm. the regular margaritas are delicious on their own, but this, I think mm. the combination of the pineapple and the peppers and a little bit of smoke take yes. it to a new level. No, this it's is the delicious. this is the proper cocktail space, but there's a li little bit more of a laid back space too. Yeah, we call it the rollaway bar. I say we take our drinks and go check it out. Can we get a few more before we go? Yeah, <laughs> sure. We do, okay. sell, we do sell cocktails to go oh. also. Oh. Now, you could get a bag of them. You cannot wander around the streets of New Buffalo with an open cocktail just okay. yet. We're working on that. But you can get them to go. So if you're going to someone's house or you're going to a pool party or whatever, you could take some cocktails with you. That's fantastic. That sounds great. OK, so can we go and I'm, can we take the cocktails with yeah. us? Yeah, all right. right. We're in. with us. All right, let's go. This space is much more casual. I love it being open to the outside. You can just roll up. And that, that's kind of the name of the space, right? This, the roll away bar. That's true. So this is the roll away bar. My family opened a bowling alley uh, on the east side of Michigan 75 years ago. Oh, goodness. And they let me borrow their furniture. Bar so. The borrow is the key word, right? Because <laughs> Aunt Diane, right? Aunt, uh, Aunt Diane says, yeah. if I ever sell the place, I have to bring it back. Okay. So it's a long <laughs> negotiation to be able to get some furniture. But this furniture was originally installed in the bowling alley in 1946. It's been in storage since the 70s. They take it out of storage, give it some love, a couple of coats of paint, and here we are in the rollaway bar. It, it's beautiful though. It, it creates really the ambiance yeah. of the outdoor space. Yeah, I think. And all of the spaces are unique. I have to tell you, standing up here at the bar, 70s brings back a lot of memories. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of memories, a lot of memories. But um, so what are you going to make for us here? So cocktail. this is our most popular outdoor drink, our oh. garden drink. It is called the blueberry bramble. Ooh. So what we do, we take fresh blueberries from McLuke Farms, just north of here. Okay. Put them with pineapple, a little bit of vinegar, and some sugar, and we put them in the fridge for about a week. Bring it all out of the fridge, juice it, and we put it in the middle of just a beautiful vodka soda. It's the number one nice. cocktail in America right now. Okay. Light, wow. refreshing flavors. In this case, it's going to make it a little purple, going to give it a little okay. fruit element. It's beautifully balanced. The vinaigrette helps take some of the sweetness out of the drink. Okay. So it's still light and refreshing, perfect for the garden. <laughs> Violet. And 
what this does. Our perfume. Oh, <laughs> a little flash, flash there. Drink. We're gonna. Yeah, yeah, it's it's so you know it yeah. 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 yeah, pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. So here we go. This is the blueberry brand. Drink. <laughs> That's good. Right. Oh, all right. Well, I like these. Mm -hmm. And then all of this goes well with your menu too. When are your guys' hours? So Wednesday through Sunday, 5 p.m. to 11. This is open on weekends, so Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays we'll open the rollaway bar. Um, we're actually getting a few TVs installed nice. next week. Oh, we okay, have an AC great. and a heat unit, so this could be a game day location if you want to hang out somewhere and watch a football game or watch a little golf on TV. We'll add a uh, TV to the garden as well. And where can so. people get more information? Yeah, so the best place to find us is at HBird Lounge on Instagram. You'll see what's going on on a daily basis or www.hbirdlounge.com. Perfect. All right, all right. Well, thank you so much for the tour and, of course, the drinks. And I'm here at the bar. I say one more. <laughs> all right, Hoosiers. I know we like to drive. Uh, and there is good news on how you can experience sustainable Michiana and drive sustainably. Coming up here in Michiana, we have the Electric Vehicle Expo. So you'll want to check that out for a variety of reasons. First, did you know a recent executive order has a plan for half of all electric vehicles to be electric in the next 10 years? So you might want to find out how you can experience that uh, as a driver, but also go check out the expo. So I want to find out about the expo, but also why you might want to drive an electric vehicle. So we're going to start out talking with Leah Thill, plugging in her own electric car, but really she's with MACOG and she is one of the organizers of this event. So thanks sure. for talking about it, Leah. Yeah. Yeah, so we're really excited to bring this event um, to the area on September 25th. That's the same Saturday as the Sunburst race over on campus. Um, from 10 to 1, we'll have a variety of electric vehicle owners out here with their own vehicles to allow you to ride along or even test drive their vehicles and just learn about the benefits, what it's like, how they're fun to drive. Um, and then the following week on um, during Goshen First Fridays on October 1st, from 5 to 7.30, there'll be another electric vehicle expo in Goshen if you miss the one in, in South Bend. Or you could go to both. Or you could go to both. So <laughs> why, so as in a sustainable experience, does it cost to go to this event? No, the event is so it's free. free. It's free, it's fun. Anyone can um, stop by and check out the vehicles. So what are people going to learn at these events uh, about, I guess they'll get to see electric vehicles like this one. What else? Yeah, so I think people will learn about the diversity of vehicles that are actually out there right now. Plug-in hybrids, all electric vehicles, truly family-sized vehicles like minivans. Um, we even hope to have the new uh, Ford Mustang Mach-E here. So um, there'll be really affordable used smaller range vehicles. There'll be longer range vehicles, something that'll work for everyone. Um, it's no longer just small little vehicles that go you know, 70 miles, there's a, there's a big diversity right now in what's available and more to come in the next few years. So you're gonna learn some about that experience, what it's like. Mm -hmm. um, there's gonna be a little bit about the culture of electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. I know there's a pretty avid group of drivers in the yeah. area, but also the financial piece. Um, is it too expensive to buy one? Does it cost a lot to charge one? Those kinds of pieces. Could you talk a little bit about what we might hear about that. Sure, yeah, so the cost of electric vehicles has definitely come down. It's no longer um, just a, a luxury item. Um, vehicles can be on par with similar vehicles that are not plug-ins, um, and so that's something people not be, may not be aware of, and some vehicles still have a $7,500 tax credit that really helps Ooh, bring down the yeah. cost of the vehicle. So that's, that's really exciting. Awesome. So I know you're not or organizing this event alone. There's a lot of people involved in this uh, to make it happen. Sure, so along with MACOG, we are partnering with um, ND Energy, the South Bend Office of Sustainability, the Notre Dame Office of S Sustainability, as well as the nonprofit um, South Shore Clean Cities, which is part of a Depart Department of Energy program. That's great. All right, well, I want to hear from ND Energy and learn more about the energy aspect of electric vehicles. So, right. thanks. 
Hey, Ginger. Hi. This is the cutest car. And this is what really comes to mind when I'm thinking electric cars, and probably a lot of folks too. Mm -hmm. But I know there's more to it than this. Um, that's adorable. Uh, so tell me, you're with ND Energy, so you must know something about that energy piece sure. of Electric Vehicle yeah. Expo. So um, this is an event for the National Drive Electric Week that will also take part of ND Energy's Energy Week. Um, and so uh, the transportation uh, emissions are about one third of our carbon emissions in the United States. And so anything we can do to eliminate, eliminate those exhaust emissions, like going to electric cars, helps yeah. in every way. So in, in terms of energy use, uh, why bother? Sure, <laughs> so it helps cut down on gas emissions. So you're lowering any carbon emissions that are going up and can help us meet our climate goals by driving electric. So <laughs> fewer emissions, okay. that's great for the environment. Mm -hmm. It's also good for our health. We don't have to breathe that in. Mm -hmm. um, and I suspect it's also just good, a good community investment or a good research investment. I mean, what's driving <laughs> ND Energy's interest in this event? ND Energy wanted to help sponsor this Drive Electric uh, event because we're really looking at how we can educate the public on uh, being more sustainable in society. And we're also looking at how we can electrify everything. And so electrifying everything, it goes and it eliminates admissions from all sectors. And so, um, you know, we can go beyond electric cars. So what if we had electric planes, electric trains? And wow. so electric cars are really the kickoff point in the way that um, all individuals can be involved. So if it's not using gas to drive a car, it is using electricity. So mm -hmm. how is that better? Because that's still energy. It's still energy, but it's also leaving uh, gas in the ground. And so, you know, mm. if we're not, if we're not uh, burning carbons, um, that's, that's always better. And so then we can look at electrifying the grid. And so, or we can look at the changing the way the grid is electrified. And so, um, you know, if we're able to move off of fossil fuels and away from coal and have more solar and wind and renewable energy, then the grid is better. And so then you're eliminating carbon emissions all around. So this is just part of a shift to not plugging into fossil fuels to mm -hmm. drive a car, but plugging into the sun. Plugging into the sun, everything oh, that's, that's so renewable. Fun. All right. <laughs> so I know we've got not just cute little cars that not everyone wants to drive, but we actually have some electric car drivers here in the lot mm -hmm. um, that you've brought in. That we so have we brought in probably for today. chat with them too. So, okay. So this looks like just a regular car. I'm going to talk to the owner about what's going on with this. Oh, Steve, this is your car and this is electric. Yes. So I, like I suspect I know why you're driving this car. It probably has something to do with the environmental impact or lack thereof of electric cars. Yeah, primarily that I bought it for the environmental benefits. Uh, it is a Prius, but it's a plug-in hybrid Prius. So it has both electric and a gas engine. Uh, it, I drive it 80% local, so I bought it to reduce uh, carbon and local emissions. And is that what you're finding is the case? Is that you're actually using more of the electric feature and having fewer, like less of an environmental impact with this car? Correct. I, I, I calculated I drive it locally all electric, and then I, but I have mm -hmm. the gas engine only for longer drives so I don't have to worry about charging in, charging stations. Ah, so you have options with this one. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you're having kind of a regular driving experience, I suspect, with what looks like a normal car. <laughs> it's a, it looks like a normal car, but it's fun. It's fun to drive, <laughs> high acceleration, oh. and uh, I really love driving it. So it's better to drive than a gas uh, guzzler, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. And you're parked next to a much larger vehicle over here. Scott, you drive an electric minivan? This is a thing? That's right. How is this possible? I mean, can you really take this anywhere? It seems like it would take a lot of energy to haul this around town, let alone leave town. Not really. The uh, uh, I actually live in uh, Florida, and I, I do the snowbird thing between South Bend and Florida. In so, an electric minivan? No, not okay. exactly. It's just like Steve, the, the previous guy was talking about. It's a, called a, a, a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, okay. PHEV. So like Steve, I've got an engine and an electric battery in there too, and a motor. 
So when the battery runs out, which is the way these things operate, then it switches to the engine, and that's how I'm able to go to Florida. So are you charging along the way? Is that convenient That's a good question. That's a very good question. Yes, you can, but it doesn't run exclusively on electric. I only go 34 miles. So I stop on the way down to Florida, charge for a little bit, like at restaurants, motels, mm. places like that. It's called opportunity charging. Get a little bit of a charge, continue down the road. And that helps on my overall miles per gallon. So as a driving experience, is this costing you more money? Is it costing you more time to drive this thing? I can't deny it. Yes, it does take more time because when you plug in, you have to, with my vehicle, to charge the battery completely from zero to 100% takes about two hours. But that doesn't mean that I have to do that. I just get a little extra on the way down to Florida. Fascinating. All right. Well, a lot to learn about at the Electric Vehicle Expo here in Michiana, how you're experiencing sustainable Michiana, how you can be a part of the electric vehicle crew here. So, yep. Be a part right. of the group. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Go out, check it out. Um, you're going to learn something new and get excited about those cost savings, the health benefits, and the social benefits of being part of this group. So. Well, as a producer of the show, I'm always out looking for things that we can go experience, physically go experience. It's also great when we can do that with the community so we can experience these things with the community around us. And on top of that, it's even better when that goes for a good cause. And we have all three of those things represented in something called the Nocturnal Community Bike Ride. And here to tell us about it is Matt Metzger. Matt, thank you for joining us. How are you doing? I'm doing just fine. Thanks for having me. So uh, Nocturnal is something that grew from something else and is now a community bike ride, but tell us about it. What, what is Nocturnal and what are you guys trying to do by building this community? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're, like you said, Nocturnal did start off probably 12 years ago. And what we did is it was a large variety of different events, you know, everything from running to biking to um, like a, a Tough Mudder kind of event. And then we, what we found out is that that is extremely hard to put on. And since we have kind of a limited amount of time, we thought, well, what can we do to bring the community together? Something that anybody from uh, a, a seasoned athlete to uh, somebody with a family could do. And so what we, uh, we decided on was a, something that'd be kind of unique too, it's kind of a niche kind of a, a thing. And that was a, a night bike ride. And what we're asking people to do is just trick out their bikes uh, with glow sticks, reflectors, lights. It is quite a scene. It's really neat uh, to see this all happen. And it's something where people just absolutely love it. Uh, the whole community comes together and it's just, uh, you know, and, and I think you also asked about what, what's the purpose of it. Uh, this one is uh, specifically uh, to help the Fellowship Missions Addiction, Addiction Recovery Hub. And so what we're liking to do is have people that are struggling with addiction be able to join in with normal people, which we all have our own shortcomings and some of them are just more obvious than others. Uh, so we're saying, hey, everybody come together, we're gonna ride. And then at the end of the ride, we go to somebody's house and we take donations and uh, with uh, whatever cash we get, we put it in an envelope and go knock, knock, knock on their door. And we say, here, this is our chance to share love to our neighbors, which we're supposed to do. So we're, and, they don't know we're coming. That's a really fun thing about it. So um, it's just a huge mass of people on bikes show up. We surprise them with uh, the cash. They, there's somebody in need. It's not just a random person. I mean, they got to have it. We, we carefully vet the people we're giving it to. So we, we knock on the door, say, here's this, use it in a wise way. And then we're off and we finish up the ride. I generally have a door prize or two to give away. And that's basically the gist of Nocturnal. So Nocturnal this year is coming up on October 9th, and uh, you guys are starting about 7.30 p.m. Is that a gather time, or is that the time you guys are taking off? Uh, we'd like to take off. We want racers to show up, a problem, you know, show up at 7. It does get hectic. Uh, you know, you can imagine with hundreds of bikes around, you just the, there's a lot of chaos. So we do like to have um, some sort of, a, I recommend coming at 7, because we'd like to leave. We have a police escort. So we have police that will lead the way and at every intersection, they shut down the intersection. So you can let this mass of bikes through. And the plan is this year, we're uh, going to ride around Winona Lake, the entire lake. So it's about, it's about a five mile ride. And 
we can imagine. I mean, we start to stretch out over about a mile long, you know, so it's so cool to see it with all these lights flashing and glowing. And it's just, it's such an experience. Now, if people uh, are new to riding, uh, from what I understand, it could be all levels, like you said, whether it be the competitive people uh, or, or somebody just to hopping out for the first time that want to be part of community. Mm -hmm. um, for those people who want to, well, what happens if I uh, have a flat tire, you know, mm -hmm. along the way? What, uh, you know, what do we do then? You've got yeah. an answer for that. Yeah, we absolutely do. We have a, a chase vehicle. It's a, it's a flatbed uh it's for hauling cars normally, but they've said, they said, Hey, we'll pick up anybody who uh, has a flat tire, the chain breaks, or they just say, I'm too tired to pedal. That does happen periodically. I mean, it's super, like you said, Kelsey, it's, it's a very slow where it's not a race. It's like, we want everybody to stay as close as we can together because it's easier for the police, you know, to get people through intersections. So we do have a lead vehicle that will keep everybody at a very, very comfortable slow pace this way you can just soak in the environment people stand out of their, their porches and wave uh it's just it's a very festive very festive atmosphere and so much fun so do you guys have uh prizes for like the best decked out bike with lights and stuff like that you know we we will we don't have the price prize yet but we will we have that and we we come up with just some random we like we like to have a very low key and very fun and so, yes, we'll come up with, you know, we'll come up with some random, right? We'll, we'll have some, some things to give away and we'll come up with reasons to give them away. But, but yes, that is true. Well, I imagine it is quite a sight for people to see this group, a uh, long mm -hmm. line of, of bikes all decked out. And it really is that community uh, because you're doing mm -hmm. it for someone else uh, at, at the end of the day. Um, how do people find out how to participate in this? Mm -hmm. The simplest way to do it is just to go to eventbrite.com and then just search nocturnal that, and I'll take you, I'll give you all the details. Um, so it's, it's got all the details there. And then also I can give you the, the link if, if you like, but it's a kind of a long link and it's not an easy friendly one to go to. So that's just the simplest way. So if you guys at home are interested in that, we'll make sure to have that link on the Experience Michiana website as well, and we'll get you over to them. Uh, Matt, thank you so much for you and all of the people, because I know it's not just you, uh, that put in your time to make something like ha this happen. So it's you and, and those donors and those volunteers. It, it really does take a community to put a community yeah. event on. It sure does. It sure does. We have a very bike-friendly in Warsaw, you know, like everybody just chips in and helps it's so it's so nice all right well thank you so much remember that's the nocturnal community bike ride if you want more information visit experiencemichiana.org i've always wanted to do that nocturnal bike ride it looks like so much fun the only thing is do that first then go to the hummingbird lounge don't drink first and then do the bike ride uh, i don't know oh, don't, don't know ask me for that. advice on that one <laughs> and don't forget next week though you're going to get to see me here at Woo! jazzercise and if you've got any other things that you think <laughs> we need to experience. Just use the hashtag experience Michiana. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs>